Hello everyone, um, this is an updated video from the last time I showed you how to make a desktop background easily using Photoshop. Um, it's been a couple more years now, so uh, got CS5 um, instead of CS3. Um, there's a couple of new features on there that you can use, um, but it's pretty much the same jazz, but um, this should be a lot clearer and easier to understand. The first thing you want to do is open up Photoshop and you want to hit the pr print screen um, sh shortcut key on your keyboard and then go file new and it will al already have the dimensions um, for what you need and click OK. Um, now I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do yet so for now I'm just going to give it a black background so to do that in the left hand panel here you just click the bucket tool and select uh, your colour that automatically has black and white if you click the little arrow it will switch between the two or if you want to change your colour then you've got the colour palette over here if for some reason you haven't got the colour palette you go to window um, yeah you go to window and you can select the different palettes here um, or the different bars um, I layers, color, navigator, which I have here, that's all I need. Um, okay, next thing to do is go to your brushes tool or your text tool. Now, depending on what you're doing, I'm going to go to the text tool and I'm just going to click anywhere here and type in my YouTube username like that and then go to this arrow tool here make sure auto select and show transform controls are ticked here and here because it's a lot easier to move and you know what you've actually selected um, so at the moment I've just got that um, I want to go back to the text tool click in line with the text that I've already put um, hold control A which will um, highlight it all and then I want to go up here to my text, um, well my fonts, and I want I, I want to select the first one that's on my list, and then click um, where it says Beyond Sky, just after there in the blank space. Click there just once, and then using my arrow keys on my on my keyboard, I can go down, and it will go it will cycle through the fonts that I have. Um, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger, um, so I'm going to choose 72 so I can actually see it a little bit better. And then click back into this box and carry on going through them. So just select one that you like the look of. And okay, I'm just going to use that for now. It's called uh, Montal Montal Montalban. I think. So. We've got that, um, and then to make to have like a glow or a, or a stroke or um, something to make that stand out a little bit more, what you want to do is you go over to your layers palette and you double click uh, the text layer which will have the T on it, and then you want to go to outer glow, and here um, the default color is like a yellow, and the opacity set at 75. You want to put the opacity to 100% click on the yellow and I'm going to select a normally go for a reddish sort of glow but this time I'm going to go for a light green so press OK and then by adjusting the spread I oh know um, change the blend mode to normal as well because um, it gives it a better effect I think um, next thing you want to do is change the spread size so if you change the spread size it will just it's almost like a stroke but it will thicken the outside lots um, but then if you keep that to zero and you change the size as you can see it makes a pretty cool sort of glow effect um, which I want to go for and if I change the spread it would just be a lot thicker which I don't really want so I normally leave that at zero and just play around with the glow settings and you could change the spread a little bit just to make the center of it a little tiny tad darker I suppose uh, I'll set that to 2% and 
and I'll set this to 75. Actually, no, I'll set this to set this to 50%. So you can actually click on the box and type it in 50. Um, and leave that to 2%. Uh, you can change the range as well. Um, it's basically the brightness, the darkness of it, kind of, in a way. It's just the range of how um, much is actually sort of glowing um, with the elements you're using. So I'm gonna choose around, choose around 65%. Um, you can also have inner glows, which I don't normally use. Uh, inner shadows, it sort of makes an inner shadow, it almost looks like it's indented into the background, which is kind of cool. Um, get some pretty good effects with that, as you can see. Um, but I don't want to do that. Uh, you've got a drop shadow, but you're not really going to see that very well in the black background. Textures, um, you can go through loads of different texture, textures, you can download more textures as well. Um, this is just the default one. Um, also, um, you've got contour. It's bevel under Bevel and Boss, you press contour and um, or contour, however it's pronounced. And I am going to use this. A lot of people don't like to use this, but I think it looks pretty snaz. Um, it gives it sort of like a chromey look, and I want that. Um, by, so by doing that, you click Bevel and Emboss, click on to Contour, um, and then change the range to about, change the range to about 2%. And leave it at that. Um, you can do pattern overlays as well, but I don't want to do that. Um, you can give it a stroke to make it sort of like dark around the edge. Um, this is quite useful, um, but I'm only going to put this at one. I'm going to so I click the stroke, keep it at one, keep the color black. I could put it at a different color, like red, but as you can see, it's not really that visible or white. Um, but I'll keep it at black because it looks nice. So click OK, so now if I zoom in, um, it's not looking too bad, um, it's quite a cool effect so far, so um, if I set that as my background now, that's what I would see. Ok, uh, next thing you can have a look at is your brushes. Um, so what you want to do is, you want to go and make a new layer by clicking this here, if you hover over it for a while, it says create new layer. Click that, then you want to go to your brush icon, and then this little drop down arrow, and then this arrow, and then you get all your brushes. Um, you can go through loads of different ones. If there's a brush that you, you see on here that you like, then um, just let me know, and I'll try and find the download of where I actually got that from, or I'll just upload. I'll upload where I got it from. Um, I'm going to use a different colour. I'm going to use yellow this time. That's okay. And that one that I just used there looked pretty cool. Um, so I'll just find the border. When you do something and you want to move it slightly, because sometimes the border doesn't show up, um, if you just hold Control Z, that will undo the last thing you've just done then click again and it'll go back. Um, I'm actually going to make this green so I want the exact green that I've used so what I want to do is, is I want to click this um, colour picker here click hold and click here and you can get the brightness of it and that's about bright and then I want to go back to my brush then I want to click here again because I think that would look pretty awesome there we go. It's kind of like an exploding effect and I'm going to have that either side so the next thing you want to do is I'm going to click the arrow tool again so as you can see it's just selected this on this layer and you want to right click go up to the top where it says duplicate layer click that 
then click um, I want to save this as um, layer one copy I'll just leave it as that press OK and then um, using this tool um, you want to click you want to click the box which is this layer and then you can see the different points here that you can use to drag uh, to size and you want to get the middle drag it all the way over to here and then drag this back over to where it meets which is there then click enter and then that saved that now just I've only done like this is really simple like I haven't really done that much to it but as you can see already it looks pretty good so um, next thing you want to do is make sure that the text layer is actually over the um, original layer so you, you click the text box and you drag up to the top like so um, this is just a really quick demonstration if you've got any comments um, or questions just let me know um, subscribe if you do like my videos check all the others out and thanks for watching